You can't make money refurbishing electronics. Okay, so maybe can't is too strong of a word. I guess it is possible. It's just very, very difficult. I'll talk more about that in a minute, but we first need to ask, what does refurbished mean? Or more importantly, what is the expectation when someone is buying a refurbished device? And we've got a very plugged heatsink right here. Wow, look at all this. So this is a great example if one of these companies would have gotten this PS4 and just wiped out the outside and then sold it as refurbished, they would have sold it with all of this gunk caked up on the heatsink like that. There's just so much of this hair and debris lodged in this thing. So this one, if it was sold as refurbished, would have just overheated very, very quickly. And as you see, I do have a timer started because I wanna time and see how long it takes to fully refurbish this PS4. And this is, um, I've done a lot of these before, so I'm fairly quick at this. And I don't generally break stuff when I'm taking it apart or doing this work, you know? And if you have employees, some of that's gonna happen sometimes. So that's another cost you need that they would need to, to think about that in this type of business. And the next question we need to address is why do so many companies claim to refurbish devices but don't actually do it? Unfortunately, to my knowledge, there is no official legal definition of refurbished, and I think that's inherently one of the main problems. To my knowledge, there's no standard that companies have to be held accountable to when they're selling refurbished devices. And now we're down to the fan and the disc drive on the other side. This fan definitely needs to be cleaned, so let's take that out first. And then with something this dirty especially, the disc drive rollers are probably gonna be very dirty. So if you're really doing a good job of refurbishing one of these, you need to clean those rollers too. Oh, and this fan, yeah, this fan is bad. Look, when I spin it, it doesn't really even spin. Versus a good fan, it'll spin like that. So you need to replace the fan, which we will do. Need to clean that out. Let's check the disc drive and get those rollers cleaned. Now as to what the expectation is from a customer when they're buying a refurbished device, that varies depending on the customer. My opinion is that a refurbished device should be taken apart, cleaned, repaired, and basically work exactly as it would from the factory. I would expect a refurbished device to be in good physical condition, not perfect. I would expect maybe some scratches or smudges on the outer shell. I would expect a refurbished device to last pretty close to a brand new device. Just those three screws and then this bottom plate comes off. We can get to the rollers and yes, they are very dirty. The whole disc drive is dirty inside. So with that in mind, I'm gonna brush it out, blow it off with some canned air, and then we'll clean the laser and these rollers right here. Okay, now rollers. And that's why I cleaned the rollers off. They were very dirty. If one of these companies would have just put this for sale as is without cleaning the rollers, they would have been super dirty and it would have taken in discs very slowly. This roller actually probably could be replaced. It's kind of chewed up right here. I am just going to use it anyway though and we'll see what happens when we put it back together. So why do so many companies claim to refurbish devices but don't actually do it? Well, as far as I can tell, that all just comes down to profit. Now, there's no way to know for sure where most companies are getting the devices they use to refurbish, but most of them are getting them much cheaper than just the average person could buy them. I don't know what that price is, but I'm confident it's a lot less than you can get on, say, eBay. That being said, I am gonna use eBay prices for this video example, just because I know what those prices are. Shell itself isn't in horrible condition. It's definitely not the dirtiest I've seen, but man, there is quite a bit of dirt in here. Now, something like this, it would probably actually be easier just to soak it in water, and I might actually do that because this dirt is really hard to get all the way off. There's always kind of like a dirt residue even when you clean it all off, so. Now, that's really not too bad for a brushing out cleaning, but you know, if you're really gonna do a good job, refurbishing this thing. I think we need to go ahead and get it wet and really brush it out really good. So I'm gonna leave my timer going while I do that. And then we gotta let this thing dry. 
So I think what I'll do is I'm just gonna get a damp paper towel instead of submerging the, the whole thing in water and we'll clean it off that way. As of the filming of this video in May of 2023, I can go on to eBay and buy a used and working PlayStation 4 for between $100 and $150, so I'm gonna guess the average is about $125. Now when we go and look at companies who are selling PlayStation 4s, an acceptable condition PlayStation 4 that is refurbished from DK Oldies is $239, GameStop is $219, Best Buy is $269, and Back Market is $314. We're gonna say that the PS4 that I'm refurbishing today, we can sell for $220, that's GameStop's refurbished PS4 price right now. Now, as far as I can tell, some companies just wipe off the outer shell of the device that they're selling and call that refurbished. If my buy price is $125 and the labor costs $5 to wipe off the outer shell, my sell price is $220, that leaves me with $90 profit. I'm gonna be installing a used fan, so we do need to give that a little bit of a brush out. Now, if I actually refurbish this PS4, and my buy price is $125. If we're paying somebody $20 an hour for labor, and it takes about an hour to fully refurbish this, we're also gonna run into more parts and supplies that we need because we're doing a much more thorough job. So I'm gonna estimate parts and supplies at $20. If we sell it for $220, then our profit is only $55. That's a $35 price difference, which might not sound like much for one console, but if you're selling hundreds or thousands at this price, that's gonna be a significant amount of profit. Now with that installed, we've got the motherboard. We need to give this a good brushing off. And then of course, we need to apply the perfect amount of thermal paste. I'm guessing the vast majority of people don't actually open up their refurbished device that they bought. So they don't actually know what the inside looks like. And moreover, they probably don't care. They're just glad that they got a better deal than brand new. That means that these companies can just call it refurbished and they get away with the fact that they don't actually refurbish it and they can pocket that $35 price difference. As a disclaimer, these are very rough estimates and I haven't included all of the different prices or possibilities of things that could be going on. For example, shipping prices, as well as different parts and supplies. And then any employees that you have, you have to pay taxes and various other costs associated with employing people. There we go. Now that it's the perfect amount of thermal paste certified, TPTP certified, we can put it back into the case. Now we need to wipe off the top metal plate and we can install that. Now this part right here is just kind of grimy. It doesn't just clean off with a brush. And if I'm getting something that is refurbished, I expect it to not be grimy. I don't always expect it to be like 100% clean, but grimy and nastiness just doesn't work. I'm gonna put this on here to protect the board. While we scrape on this a little bit. And even that's not perfect, but it is at least clean. Hard drive is much cleaner now. Now time for the power supply. And once again, the power supply is also very dirty, so I'm gonna give that a good brushing off, and then we'll install it. I'm not gonna show all of this, but I will keep the timer going while I'm doing it. And here we go. Now I have brushed out this bottom case, but I'm gonna spend a little more time on this eject button right here, because that's something that you touch all the time and you can see if it's dirty. And once you get it installed, once you get this case installed onto the PS4, it's kind of hard to get up in there with anything to clean it. Same with this whole kind of shelf right here. It's hard to clean once you have it all together. So we're just gonna clean that now. Now we can install that part. Now we just have the top pieces to clean and then install. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of spray away glass cleaner. I used to use isopropyl alcohol for cleaning these cases, but that actually kind of like dries it out a little bit. I still need to fully test this system, test all the features, make sure there's nothing else that's wrong. And we're already at 48 minutes. That's gonna take a minimum of 10 to 20 minutes. So we're probably gonna be over an hour on this refurbished system. So you tell me in the comments, number one, what you think refurbished means, and number two, how much you would pay for a system like this. One of the main problems is 
after spending all this time on this PS4, it's really just not worth any more than probably about $220. And you can get a used system on eBay or probably Facebook Marketplace for a lot cheaper than that. So ultimately, it's very difficult for companies that sell refurbished consoles to really make money at it unless they cut corners. I don't think it's right that they cut corners, but ultimately that's just how it is and why they do it. Now let's get this thing started up and see if it'll work. And here we go. We do have power, we've got a blue light. It just does PlayStation 5 here because that's the last thing I hooked up to the TV. It's not recognizing this as a PS5 or anything. While it's restarting, I'm gonna grab a disc Let's see how well this thing pulls discs in. While that's doing the system check, let's check the disk drive. Okay, not too bad at all. Yeah, not the best, but that definitely, I think that definitely works for a refurbished console. I do want to put it in one more time to make sure it spins up. Ooh, that was a little rougher. Yep. So the disk drive is spinning the disk up and it's working fine. Okay, and this PS4 is working great. We're at 50 minutes. There's at a minimum 10 minutes more of testing that needs to be done on this. So I think an hour might even be not quite enough time to do a full refurbishment on a PS4, assuming it's in the condition that this one was in. If you wanna know the best places to find a refurbished game console, I'm gonna put my refurbished review playlist up on your screen now so you can go check it out and see which companies provide the best refurbished game consoles. If you wanna check out our new merch, go to tronicsfix.com. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.